life on the road. It's booze, tacos, angry dwarfs, strippers waving guns, and fees, fights, cancel flights, running with the runs, and blacklists, bounce checks, great a bachelorette. <laughs> Drunks in the front, making out for your set. And middle acts doing blow more, missing merch. And drive the rental car past another mega church. And juice keys, vagina fists, your cell phone is gone. One big law and order marathon. Laugh Factory or the Roosevelt? Okay. Yeah. You guys, uh, you guys good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to complain more? Roosevelt. Roosevelt Hotel? Mm hmm. Yeah, okay. Roosevelt Franklin <laughs> Elementary School? No. No? Do you remember Roosevelt Franklin Not Elementary School? Roosevelt from the Charlie Brown uh, cartoon. Uh, <laughs> my character from that? Did I make yeah, that he was that? the one black guy, kid, right? One, right? Yeah. Excuse me? <laughs> I don't think that's appropriate. I think it is. Is it? When those cartoons were drawn, there's no doubt that was appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> good point. That is a very good point. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the Road Stories, everybody. I'm your host, Murray Valeriano. Part of All Things Comedy. Uh, go check it out if you haven't been to All Things Comedy uh, recently. Got a lot of good stuff going on there. Uh, I have to apologize. Uh, not to you gentlemen. I have to apologize to my listeners for the, for the late drop this week. I was... I got super busy this week, man, it, for the first time in a very long time. Is that a humble brag, the saying that you're working now? That- uh, no, I think it's straight out brag. Okay. Suck it. Uh, people- <laughs> really, you could have just said it was uh, because of the holiday and you spent a little time with your family. You could have gone that route. Instead, you chose to be a show-off. Well, I, my people know I have got nothing going on in my life. This is it. This is what I lived for. Really? Yes, until last week. And you know this is a, a subject I don't like to I kid about. Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if this is all you have, I, I insist you slit your own throat in the bathtub. What do you think my plan's for at 12.01? Uh, oh, great. Yeah, finish this up. We'll drop this. Make sure this, yeah, make sure this drops. Maybe that's why it's going to be late. <laughs> uh, real quick, I just want to introduce uh, two guys. I believe this is a... I'm going to go ahead and make this about me. Okay. This, this Some is more? a pard castathon tradition. I, listen, you've said that before. Mm-hmm. This is only my second time here. Tradition's <laughs> got to start somewhere. I was here once with no. I was here. I was here with Gary uh, Brightwell, but that was for your uh, when you guys were filling in for Bill Angvall. 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 No. <laughs> Angvall. You know what? Here's your sign. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, I know what your sign, mean, Jimmy. Weren't you and I here once before? Yes, yeah, we were here. We once did before. this. Yes, we did this. You yes. and I were here. Yes, together. Uh, two years ago, and then I was here once with Gary Brightwell, but I don't think that was Parcastathon related. Well, it was Parcastathon related because you came on the radio show I did. Uh, and did the podcast afterwards. I did a back to back. I tolerated you, this for more than one segment. <laughs> you, you two hours. <laughs> well, I, for one, am looking forward to repeating ourselves. No kidding. I, I almost <laughs> to go, oh my God, I got four stories. I, know, I don't remember. I uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. Wait, listen, uh, I, I really have. This is Mike Siegel, obviously, and Jimmy Pardo. Thank you guys for coming on. I, I appreciate you. I know both of you are very sought after uh, <laughs> podcast guests. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming. Well, Jimmy and, and is it. Jimmy, He's got his own show. I appreciate He's got you two texting. shows a week, this guy's well, I got two up. shows a week. I've got podcast a thought coming up. I'm guesting on everybody's. I'm, I, there's nobody I haven't said yes to. <laughs> And I uh, just did a take to a camera that doesn't exist. Uh, and by the way, that's not true because somebody's going to go, I did ask him and he said no. And I'm very. Listen. Well, he's doing back to back road stories today. Oh, uh, I'm doing two? Oh, yeah. Oh, I couldn't think of anything worse. Well, I need somebody to hand me my razor blade. <laughs> I'll help you with that part of it. Oh, okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> sure. Um, Mike Siegel, thanks for coming. I appreciate it, buddy. It's always uh, good to be here. Always, uh, always a pleasure. Thanks. I have to, I have to say, I know this, is, I, I, this, this podcast is about you guys. Mm-hmm. Damn this right! Is, this, this podcast is, what? is not about Murray Valerio. This podcast is about the guests. Um, but I'm starting this one off uh, with a benefit I did the other night. Let's hear about okay. it. Like, as Mike uh, said, Murray, we're going to repeat we're, stories. We're, we're tapped out. So <laughs> you, <tapped> you would, <laughs> oh my God, pull some weight on your own show. <laughs> Jimmy ran a marathon. Let's talk an hour for that. Oh. Let's just let's just save your Don Raper stories for uh, <laughs> for for the end, right? Don Raper was he? No, uh, uh, Raper uh, in. The RV, the Ford, RV guy RV? in uh, Indiana. Oh, it, that's the only thing I can it's remember. Draper. From us. Yeah, All right. but I don't know his first name. Is it Don? No, is it Glenn? I, I don't know. No, you think of Don um, Draper from Mad Men? Yeah. I might be. Two, two, I might be. I get him close. That's a joke. I get close. <laughs> so, as a good American, mm-hmm. as I am, I get asked to headline this benefit down in Tustin, which is in the Orange County area. Murray, can I say something? Yeah. as a gentleman, as a friend on the air to you. Sure. Real headliner never says they're headlining a show. <laughs> they just say they're doing a show. It's a true story. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's a true story. It comes off a little amateur. I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing you a favor. Friend, friend, friend. Yeah, you could have Should I have done it off the air? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be my Did point. you edit this out? You sure can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I was opening. Um, can I tell you something? Yeah. Real MC doesn't say that. <laughs> they just say they're on the show. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So anyway, I was doing this benefit. Raising money for uh, homeless veterans to get back into the homes and raise money for, you know, soap, whatever. You know, they put them in the homes. Now they need soap and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I get a text on Super Bowl night from the woman who's drunk. Wait, Go, the woman in charge is drunk. The woman in charge is drunk. Go Broncos. Hey, just talk to somebody. They're bringing some of the vets. Be as dirty as you want. Now, I'm not a dirty comic, but I'm also, despite what Jimmy thinks, a professional. So I saved that text, and I get to this place down in Orange County. Uh, she's like, hey, help yourself to the bar. Really excited to have you. They open with a prayer. Oh, boy. To the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Our Savior. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You don't sure. find that odd? I don't because I, uh, I believe in that. World and we support our veterans. Or support our oh, homeless, this has nothing to do. Our Lord and Savior. This is nothing to do. All I, glory I, to God. Is that the phrase? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, you're asking me. I have no no clue. No <laughs> clue. You saw Ted Cruz's uh, <laughs> accept this uh, speech. In, oh no, what did he say? Iowa, his victory speech in Iowa. Where he said, "Well, first things first, And I, I'm going to phrase it. All glory to God in that mm-hmm. awful Ted Cruz voice of his. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but just pandering to that his audience. Yes, all glory. God did it. He did do this. Yeah. By the way, I'm not. I'm not anti God. I'm just anti Ted Cruz. <laughs> no. Hey, listen. And we're, we're not a religious podcast here. No, we're not. Really- that's insane, Murray. Of course, you, sh- you shouldn't open up a comedy show with a prayer. <laughs> a prayer, a pr- at a, and it was it was at a golf club too. It was at a, a, a what do you call them? A, a golf country club? club, a country club. So that's fair, well, right? G- Jesus had a low handicap. Oh, he was he was good. That guy had no trouble with the water hazards, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and in the sand trap, never had a rake. <laughs> Because he doesn't have footprints. Right. Damn it. These oh, folks write themselves. God. with you. Mike's oh. not even a Catholic and he enjoys our Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Murray, <laughs> here's my thing about that. Uh, Hold on. By the way, I think that sand uh, joke should have got more. Mm-hmm. I, think I, th- I, th- I think you, you should have left it out there. I think you jumped on it too quick. I think you did very well in the room and I'm happy with it. All right. Uh, I, I, think you, I think you jumped on it. You should have let it breathe. Nah. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> probably should have. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Uh... So you know when I say, here's the thing, nothing nothing's coming. No, no, no. No, no, no. So they're homeless veterans. Why homeless. not show them how the 1% live at the country club? Yeah. Why, oh, yeah. Not, why not show them? Hey, let's bring some veterans. The prayer will be dirty. And then you can see a bunch of guys in uh, Tommy Bahama shirts and khaki pants. Uh, <laughs> Get in their Lexuses animals, and drive yeah. away. Who yeah. are really yeah. running the world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Come on in, veterans. We're here for you. We're going to do a benefit before we vote to take away your rights <laughs> and, your, and your benefits. You want to you hear the whole I dug myself? Uh, oh, hey, uh, all right, so hang on. Can I ask a question? Sure, yeah, before, yeah, please. Before your whole, please. All right, so the prayer. Prayer. And then how many comics before you? One. Just one guy. One. Uh, uh, and so once I did the prayer, I'm like, I need a drink. So I went to the bar uh, in the back and kind of re- rethinking my set. Turn and that I, water into wine, huh? <laughs> and I, hear, yeah. I hear laughter, which I wasn't expecting. because second the, prayer. Cause the, <laughs> <laughs> close with the big finish. Because the woman who booked uh, this said, hey, the opener's not funny. Oh, no. Why would she say that? I don't know. This woman needs to stay off her text. <laughs> stay off the alcohol. And second of all, I gave her a bio. She should know my <laughs> hey. hey. Well, then that's what I said. I'm like, hey, if you know the guy's not funny, then let me bring a friend. I can t- t- talk a friend into driving down for a free meal in 10 minutes, throw him a couple bones. <laughs> and that just fucking sent everything into a tither. So I'm like, never mind. Don't worry about it. I'll just, I'll just do it myself. So I'm in the back. I'm listening. I'm like, hear laughter. I'm like, oh, all right. These guys want to laugh. So I poke my head in. The opener's doing all street jokes, all street jokes, and then closes. He's a black man. I have to point this out. Mm-hmm. Then closes with Keenan Ivory Wayans's only bit that you would know Keenan Ivory Wayans for doing. I can't even, I that can't even think one of that. Is. Okay. It's the one where he, he has to go to school and, and he gets beat up by the bully every day. And his dad says, you got to fight that bully. Uh, or you got to fight me, and I beat the shit out of my father. That joke, Keenan Ivory Wayans? No. All no. Right. Well, it was his. Uh, anyway, so he closed with Keenan Ivory Wayans. Kills. Joke. Kills, just destroy. Of course, it was Keenan Ivory Wayans. Yes, yeah, classic. Just absolutely destroy. <laughs> <laughs> we all know it. We all know it. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up there, and I dig my hole. With, but I saved that text, and I said, hey, so whatever her name was, uh, texted me after, I guess she was really excited about the Broncos because she was a little drunk, and said, hey, I can be as dirty as I want, and then you heard all the butts pucker. Oh, no. Yeah. And so then I said, but then you guys open with a fucking prayer. <laughs> and then that just <sighs> brought the whole thing. Just so brought the whole really thing around. Hole. I did, because then I said, oh, then goes. I went into my religious stuff, which is not very pro-religious. And then I mentioned something about them being Republicans, that if you're going to put the people in the war, it's good that you put them in the homes, too, or something oh. like that. Mm. And they didn't like that. Silence? Yeah, they didn't like a little booze, maybe. A little Even oh, booing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have to say, brought them around and had a great set. How long did you have to do it? I did a half hour. Half thirty. Half. 
<laughs> Once again, a beating a headliner wouldn't do only thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be my. That's gonna be my. Uh, seems my, plenty. My it seems plenty, actually. <laughs> Half hour of Keenan Ivory Wayans material. Yeah, yeah, right. Some solid stuff. Uh, I'm gonna do. Pat Francis always makes this joke because uh, a comic by the name of Paul Kelly. It's a great comic. Paul Chicago. Kelly. Paul Kelly mm-hmm. used to you know, when you. He, he never enjoyed, uh, you know, comics to sit around and you bitch about a shit gig. Yeah, that's yeah. what you do. It's always horrible. That's why he based Kelly, his podcast on. Yeah. So that's why he's <laughs> but Paul Kelly never had time for that. It's like, well, Paul, if we're not talking about that, what the fuck are we supposed to talk about? <laughs> you know, like, that's what comics do. He would always go, did a check, ca- check cash? Did you, get this, did you get your money? Well, then who cares how it went? <laughs> okay, I guess we're done talking. I did this. have in common, you I did this gig the other night. Did you get paid? Yeah, done. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not fine. Like, that's all Paul ever wanted to talk about. What else do we have to talk about? Nothing. Zero. Can't talk about our feelings or real life. No, yeah. no. Family. Well, well, speaking of, so did you have to. Your hair looks great today. I don't disagree with that. Oh, wow. Right? I, I have not done, done anything. I really? just woke up. I'm, I'm, you know, really? I'm, yeah. Rolled out of bed? Yeah. I shaved my balls. Yeah, that boy, they look good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that also looks good. Yeah, and let's, know, let's, let's, let's hear it for short shorts. <laughs> You're uh, whenever I just wake up to, and my hair looks fantastic. Like it looks the best it's ever looked. And then it's always when I go to get it cut because it's like first thing in the morning. Like mm-hmm. I do that before I do my day. And the woman always goes, "Why do you want to cut it? It looks fantastic." <laughs> I go, "Trust me, in three hours it won't." <laughs> All right, effing hair. But it looks great. Well, thank you. You're keeping it high and tight, though. Well, listen, this I, Mary, I did what they call a reset. Oh, uh, I've been going in for nothing but trims. That's right, puss. <laughs> I've been going in for nothing but trims Shaves? in the last couple of years, and it was getting a little uneven. Like, it was great haircuts. They looked great, but it was all growing in the wrong direction. And so I just went in and got it done really short so everything could start growing. Uh, correct. They call it a reset now? Do they? <laughs> I'm so sure that's an industry term. <laughs> I've come to the point in my life where I've decided to cut my own hair. Oh, Murray. Well, I'm... You've given up. My wife, you? my wife. I've decided to have my wife cut my hair. Can I say this, Murray? A real barber doesn't have a family to cut his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying clippers this week. I'm very excited about what? it. What? Well, because I looked at the woman who cuts my hair, and she she does me a nine across, and then and I'm like, I can do. I can. My wife can do that. Can I direct you in the direction of Jimmy Pardo's 2002 Comedy Central special, a nine-minute bit was, about I, cutting the own hair? I know. I almost, I almost quoted it, but I was, was going right? to let you do it since you're yeah, in the room. Ahead, I, what say? <laughs> no, I just remember this is like a chimp with a flow bee can get this part of your head. Uh, yes, right? Right? And it's just like, uh, this is where the this, up top is where they make their money. Is their mo- this is where they make their money. This <laughs> is where they see the dollar signs. Uh, uh, Jake Johansson, good friend of... He does it, right? He, he flow bees. Still Flobies. Still, still Flobies. Flobies. Still Flobies. Yeah, you cut your son's hair, I assume. My wife oh, my wife cuts my son's hair, and okay. it's time to stop. My but mommy, yet you trust her well, to with do clippers. yours. She's going scissors with a four-year-old who's, you know, mm. freaking out. I have clippers in, and I watched my, the same woman do it no. for the last 20 years. I, no. I will also buy a hat when I buy those clippers. Okay, very good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, and then if it doesn't work out, then we'll go get a... Uh, a reset. My yeah. mom cut our hair as a kid, and man, I look back on the. And this is the seventies where we are a little longer. Maybe mm-hmm. it took a little more skill back then. <laughs> no, no, it's terrible. I look back at my photos, and it's just it's embarrassing. Really, and people go, "Oh my god, look at your hair." I go, "Yeah, it, mom saved five dollars." <laughs> 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 That, and it basically was that back Terrible. Then, right? it, was, it was a bowl, and but it was uneven because I have this giant cowlick here. And oh, it, yeah, she yeah, wouldn't really put a bowl on your head, though. No, she? but I mean, she tried her best to right. make it look horrendous and worked. It yeah. worked. You're yep. sending her a picture of that quaff today, yeah, see, saying, Suck "See what it, it could have been. Look, look, see look what look our this. photos could have been." This. I tell you what, man. I am. I I had the worst mullet of the '80s. I had. See, I never went the mullet. Really. Oh man, it was. I was full on uh, Chachi Bayo parted down yeah. the middle, feathered. Now that's seventies, dude. This is we're talking eighties, man. I know. I, I kept it going too long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hung on. I hung on a little long. That was still looking the eighties. You yeah, can pull that yeah, off in the eighties. Yeah, then yeah. I got to college, and we said we got to we got to clean this up. There's a fine picture of Mr. Uh, Pardo at the uh, Las Vegas Improv. Mm-hmm. I love to. I love to email you. Oh, is that I'm the there. SNL one? That's that one. SNL shirt. That's that the... classic baby. <laughs> Which, of course, I always uh, say, if you if you see that at a comedy club and you pull it off and mail it to me, I'll send you twenty dollars. Might have been fifty at one point. Yeah, fifty. I'm there in January, uh, June. Make uh, it fifty. Yeah, I could take it. All right. I don't want to have to wrestle Carl, though. That guy looks like... Oh, no, that's not on the wall. That's in a green room. Yeah. That's, oh, you that's want not, it, oh, you, you want to take the it off the wall. You've got to take it out of a frame. Oh. So, and somebody did it from... I think it was the Madison Club. Somebody <laughs> went in there with a the screwdriver and took it off the wall. <laughs> that's great. I got to say, I've never seen your picture on the wall. Hmm. There's some okay. of the... Uh, <laughs> hmm. 
Really? Zany. Have, have you been to the Improv here in Los Angeles where it's, you know... The Improv. Three feet by two feet? The Improv. Poster size? It's right over there. Melrose? No, it is on Melrose, isn't it? Oh, it is. You are on Melrose. Mm-hmm. And a fucking nice size, too. Yeah, three by two. Oh, I didn't... Might even be four by six. Oh. How much for that if I take it off the wall and mail it to you? Nothing. I want another wall. It's big. <laughs> yes. It looks, makes me look like I'm important. <laughs> is it the, uh, at the, at the Improv in Hollywood, they have those ones of like big ones. And you're... So they have like Adam Sandler... You know, Andy Rick, or, you know, all these guys. Gabriel you know, Iglesias. The, yeah, all those Kevin huge Neely, guys. And Ralphie May. And there's that one girl that nobody knows who she is, right? Oh. And then we find out, oh, that's uh, Angela Johnson. Oh, they have Angela up on the wall. And she was huge on there. And God bless her. You know, she's very successful, but not a household name. I'm not when you're up there next to, you know, huge, gigantic stars. She's not, you know what? I, and listen, I don't know anything about this woman. Me either. I and that's know why that she sells out theaters. But the comedy club, like to us, you, like the fact that comedians are going, well, who's that? Yeah. That tells you that she didn't get her chops at the improv. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's selling out effing theaters. Yeah. And, and like I said, got all power to her. But I, like as a she's comic, great. Every, but every giant photo up there in that yeah. wall, I know who they are. And most of the world knows who they are. And then her. I know and, the backstory on Angela Johnson. Okay, what is the story? Is uh, she was a YouTube head. Five minutes on YouTube. I thought YouTube. she was on like Mad TV or something like Had that. Had five minutes on YouTube. Got like Because five, of YouTube. Oh, okay. We got five million. Because it's doing the, the nail lady, right? Doing the. I think so. I think so. I never doing actually that watched that nail it. lady thing that she does. Oh, it was like a. Uh, for 45 Vietnamese minutes? Mail lady or something? I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. And then that's, and then that she, five million, and then she sells out <sighs> theaters. And then she got Mad TV. And then she was also a cheerleader. Oh, she was also like a. Uh, because of Mad TV? Maybe a San Diego Charger cheerleader? What? Oh, really? Maybe a... Oh, a full professional cheerleader. Maybe an Oakland Raiders. I think if we Googled it, I, mean, she yeah. was a, I think she was a cheerleader. Oh, I didn't she's know that. Very, she's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And, and by all accounts, very funny. I've not yeah. seen her. Jimmy Pardo, um, though. Not a bad looking guy also. Well, I do the best I can. You should see my hair when I wake up. I look fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, she was almost one of those people who came out like a Russell Peters. All of a sudden... Came out of nowhere, and then who's filling the stadium over there? Oh, this guy, Russell Peters. Right. He can, someone yeah. I've never heard of can fill a stadium? Him what? and fucking Joe Bonamassa. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know the where guitarist? the hell that yes. guy came from, but he is all over the place. Didn't exist 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, all of a sudden, then, there was a world with yeah. Joe Bonamassa in it, and I have no the fucking way, and I know music. <laughs> and not just Imagine Dragon, like where they came out and had a great song in yeah. the selling arenas. Like, yeah. Joe Bonamassa's been around for 30 years, but it's like, oh, yeah, oh, I love his first album. Oh, this isn't his first? No, this is like yeah. his 19th. Yeah. Right, right, right. And he's selling out these crazy yeah, 20 places. years into it, he got a publicist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I have two songs by Joe Bonamassa. Uh, that you would never know it's him because, you know, he's this... Because I can't tell guitar. you one song by Joe Bonamassa. Yeah. It's, you, you wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, he's a great guitarist, but he had a couple of basically uh, melodic rock, sort of classic rock sounding album. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I'm air guitar. No, it's good. <laughs> uh, they're actually great, but they don't sound any... Like, you would never know... Well, you don't even know what Joe Bonamassa is. <laughs> he's a very good guitarist. Is he like I a Steve Vai or a Joe Satriani kind of... A, a blues... You know, a clapton kind of guy, I would imagine. More closer to Clapton, not as... So he's not a noodler? Not like as a, boring as Clapton. And not as uh, busy with his hands okay. as uh, Vi or... Uh, I agree with both of those statements on guitar players. Clapton is boring and busy. <laughs> is Tony McAlpine and what's-his-face, Yngwie Malms, all those guys. Yeah, <laughs> busy. Although, uh, I think I <laughs> emailed you this about Terry. I've been really into Chicago lately. Mm. And uh, I'm really sorry that Peter Cetera is being a bitch or whatever because... Not 100% sure it's on him, uh, but... Uh, so is it come? I have not uh, followed up on this. Is he said flat out he's not going to do the away, Hall of Fame? Mike. He has walked away. Wow, he, he's okay. got more important things to deal with than the confusion. I believe I, I read a little bit of the letter. Hmm. It's very, uh, it's, it's very sad, and I, I cannot go on record speaking about it. Okay, I won't. But I'll, I will say this: <laughs> I emailed you the other day because I've been very since they got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've been really into Chicago, and I've always known Chicago, but right, I've been really, really into Chicago. And Terry Katz, am I saying his name right? Yeah, how do you fuck that up? I didn't know if it was like Kath or... or. <laughs> we doing a part of it? Kath? Am I saying that right? <laughs> yeah. Kath? Yeah, I'm going to do, do nine minutes on my hair, and then I'm going to do the, uh, part of, the part of improvisation. Uh, yeah, great guitar player. I think he was like a little bit ahead of his time. Because down in, back in the 60s, they're all very blues-based, and he was doing that kind of, not quite noodling, but really fast run. See, like a Peter Green type? That's the guy they always quote, the Fleetwood Mac guy? It's kind of similar to that. Terry would play lead guitar and rhythm at the same time somehow. He would do chords and play. It was an amazing... uh, Some guitarists think he's completely horrible. Uh, Really? Yeah. 
a friend of ours. Bonamassa? And uh, Fuck Joe that guy. It. Fuck Joe that guy. Hates it. Do, not get, do not get those guys in the same room. Um, but uh, I, I thought Terry was great. Uh, he was re- the, After he passed away, I got him. Uh, Donnie Dacus replaced him, who mm. I love. I think he's a phenomenal guy. Uh, then Chris Pinnock, who I think is another great guitarist. Chris Pinnock is a very good guitarist, yeah. Uh, did you just, didn't you just see Satara? I did at the Saban in Beverly Hills, and it was the best he's been since the 80s. He was phenomenal. S- wow. Satara at the Saban? Phenomenal. We had third row, my wife and I. And he was he was great. Great. What does he do with the Amy Grant duet? Does he have a chick sing along to, with him? He's got a woman up there that does backup vocal okay. and then does all the duets. Paula Cole? Uh, no, he's not Paula Cole. Okay. That's a very good guess. He does not <laughs> stay strictly with other PC uh, initial people. No. Um, <laughs> he's got Peter Case up there. <laughs> he's got uh, Phil Collins, Peter Chris. Oh, Lord. Uh, boy, it turns out I could do this fast. Yeah, yeah. Where are you going? Um, Forget that nine minutes on hair. Uh, he... Um, uh, he does the Amy Grant one. He does the Cher one. And oh, right. I forgot about the Cher one. Our night he did, I think, the Shaka Khan duet, but sometimes he'll do the other one that he did with uh, Crystal Bernard, believe it or not, of all people, from Wings. He had a hit with her. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Man, I had a big crush on her. Oh, who did? Who, right? Yeah, right? seriously. Gorgeous. What about Shaka Khan? Check. Mm-hmm. She's rocked me. Yeah. <laughs> That's all she wants to do. That's all she That's wants all to do. She wants to do. <laughs> So he didn't touch on at all the Hall of Fame. You know what he did, Mike? This is uh, he did say because this was back when he had just, in fact, he had just announced on his website the letter to to the band saying, "This is long overdue, fellas. Looking forward to getting our trophy. If only Terry could be there." Sure, sure. I read that also. Uh, um, and uh, so you know what? Why don't we show up? Do uh, I'll strap on the bass. We'll do twenty five or six to four, and give the fans a, a th- what they want. And I, you know, like here we go. And so just like two days later, he's at the Saban. So he goes, well, I'm sure you all heard the good news. And everybody, of course, applauds. And he goes, they got El Chapo. Uh. <laughs> and some woman right behind me goes, that's not the good news. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, dunce. You think maybe he was making a joke, you dumb coos? <laughs> Jesus, how do you live your life? <laughs> and then she hired Murray for a benefit. <laughs> <laughs> be as dirty as you want. Uh, will Go I be, Broncos. Will I be headlining? <laughs> will I be? Um, you ever open for a band? I, you know what? I opened uh, my very first gig uh, was opening. Uh, one of my first gigs was opening up for my friend Gary Shera's band. See how I bring it around to this. Top. I like it. was good. Real good. Right? You. Proud of you. Uh, I opened up for. Uh, <laughs> I'm proud of you. Oh, I wish I could remember the name of his band, but it was Gary Shera down at some in Frankfurt, Illinois. Ooh. Uh, and. Um, I did all three, like I opened for all three sets. Like I went back out and because they oh, were just really? doing a bar, they were just a night of them playing band, doing stuff. Oh, then they bar. take a break and then you come on. And then I, so I opened at the beginning and I went back up and did another set and did it, you know, we, a beginning, middle, and end. I was so raw that I didn't know not to do that. <laughs> right. They never had a comic open for them, so they didn't know not to do that. Um, and I'm sure it went horribly. I'm sure it was horrible. Did they give you the uh, instructions? Don't don't touch the equipment. You can no. stand in front of it. And don't. That, Okay. <laughs> you know what? Nothing really. Uh, just I, it's because your friends asked you, right? It was my friend. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure if there was a booker there, it'd be like, "Don't touch the equipment." Yeah. Did they remember to introduce you? Every time, oh, Gary, Gary went back up every time and said, <laughs> "You know, here's uh, uh, you know, I think they lied and said, here's you know, from you know, you've seen him on HBO or one of those bullshit. You've seen his SNL T-shirt. Yeah. You probably <laughs> seen his mistake of a headshot. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was. Uh, it, I'm sure it was horrible. I'm sure it was horrible. <laughs> Yeah, well, most bands are, most bands are. I've, I've only opened for uh, a cover band, the uh, Boogie Nights, the uh, disco band. cover band. They're a pretty decent-sized band. They must have a decent-sized band. You know what? They Somebody owns the name, I think, and they franchise different. Uh, okay, so yeah. these guys, I, they stayed in the same crappy motel. This was up in Monterey, and Jimmy Dore and I were working this club that I don't think exists anymore, but some guy had won the lottery. I've done that gig. You know that guy? I opened for uh, English Beat. Uh, Dave Wakeling. Dave Wakeling at that place. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this place just opened, and uh, it was one of those places you go in, and and we were doing the first comedy night, I think, mm-hmm. Jimmy and I. So I was uh, going first, and Jimmy was closing it, and we were staying at this little crappy motel, and then this these uh, this band came, and they came for the weekend. So we were we were going to do the comedy show first, and it was a weird restaurant. Remember he he had. Oh, it was I like think, a f- Asian fusion yeah, yeah. sort of he thing. He, he had a sushi bar in the corner, <laughs> and then he had, and it was just like he was all over the place. He with literally it. won the lottery, and yeah. op- and's like, hmm, I love sushi, and I love comedy, and I love music. Ooh, here we I go. Got a yeah. venue. I got and he a also venue. bought a Hummer, and I had a joke about uh, those like douchebags who right. drive Hummers, <laughs> <laughs> and then they told me later, yeah, the owner bought one of those. Oh, right, sorry, but he. Uh, so the Boogie Nights were playing. 
and and they had all their crap set up there, and they were mm-hmm. going to start the show after ours. And so well, since I was working with a good friend, Jimmy Dore, we were, I was going to fuck with him. After my set, I came off off stage, and while Jimmy was on, I had put like the boogie night. They'd come out in full costume. <laughs> right, right. I put on a big Afro wig <laughs> and like sunglasses and like the leisure suit. And I sat behind the drum kit, and like while he was talking, I act like I was tuning things, like boom, 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 tap, tap, boom, boom, boom. And he's up there talking, like hoping he would turn around and notice it was me and just crack up. And all he did, and I was like making little boom, 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 during while he was talking. And all he does, he looks back at me. Well, he goes, what the fuck? And pops the mic back into the stand and walks off stage. Oh, oh, no. So I got no laugh. No, he just pissed off. And the crowd's going, what the, what the fuck? Because they were like, I'm sucking focus away. Right. I'm in the back. <laughs> and Jimmy walks up. And I had to yell, I'll go, Jimmy, it's me. And I pull, I pull, the, I pull the wig off. And he looks back and goes, Ugh. and he goes back and finishes oh. his set. <laughs> and I went, oh, man, this Totally backfired. Oh. This totally backfired. Thank God he started smoking pot after that. Oh. So he gets so angry. And there were two times in my life that I actually I did shit like that. That was one, and they both went nowhere. <laughs> and the, that was the second time. The first time I was working Vegas in with uh, Todd Glass. Mm-hmm. And the first night, uh, so I'm middling and Todd's headlining. And I'm up on stage, and the very first night started on like on a Monday or Tuesday. And then I'm noticing uh, during my set, there's like people aren't looking at me. They're looking behind me. And just Todd has like got a bag of chips and he's just walking around backstage eating, just looking around, just doing that's it. And just like complete people are like, what the fuck's this guy? And he's just like looking at things and just eating chips. And, I'm like, oh. and I just like laugh. I just start laughing. Just, and people don't know what the hell's happening. So I vowed that I'm going to get back at him like mm-hmm. by the end of the week. So by Saturday night, I had met uh, in the, this was in the Excalibur hotel and walking around excalibur there's people in like uh you know old time people garb yeah like uh knights of the round table yeah renaissance type yeah so i i meet the guy who's wearing the jester outfit uh-huh. and i say hey can i borrow that <laughs> like one night he's like yeah whatever so there uh so i do the this is the first show saturday night I get off stage and I run over to their dressing room and he gives me the full jester outfit, you know, the Harlequin things, mm-hmm. like the curly pointed things with the bells hanging off the toes, hat and the toes. toes thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, the whole thing. And I put that on, I put sunglasses on and I grab a martini glass and <laughs> walk out and I sit during Todd's set like about 10, 10 rows deep and I just start heckling him. <laughs> In my, I go, not funny. And I'm wearing this giant hat, right. you know, jester and then he's like what the f-? and he looks down and he sees me and he goes oh yeah, it's you and he keeps going i was like god damn yeah, I just shift. you shift you didn't even win that I, I didn't even win that and then i now i gotta get back up and walk out <laughs> in this jester outfit like an asshole <laughs> yeah so now i don't play jokes anymore I'm the, I'm the guy who if i get the joke played on me i play it back at the person and then they take it offensive yes like it's, it's almost yeah. and i don't it's not that I go too far. It's just that they don't have the same line that they put on other. You know what I mean? I do. It's, it's always yeah. all of a sudden I'm the asshole. That's why I don't ever. Uh, I don't ever do that anymore. Yeah. You know, I, I think it depends on the gig. You know, one time I was in uh, Minot, North Dakota, and I, I'll never remember the guy's name. But and maybe I already said this on the show. And if I did, I apologize. It's been a year. Uh, he, it, I was bombing miserably. He was the he was he was the headliner, Murray. <laughs> and, uh, oh, you point out other headlines. Yeah. He, uh, certainly, you point the other one out. You don't brag about yourself. It's about uh, respect. I don't know if it was you, know, you have respect for yourself. <laughs> they expect you to be a headliner. I'm, I'm on the show. I'm performing here. We oh. assume that you're a headliner. You don't have to tell us. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, you're wrong. Um, I'm bombing miserably, and he came up and sat in the front row. Uh, with some popcorn, and he would he would watch me, and I would get a laugh. I would get to a joke, and he'd go, "Ha ha, ha no." <laughs> he would he would laugh, then look around at the rest of the audience, staring at me, acknowledge like, "Oh, oh we're not going to enjoy this." <laughs> and he and it was the it it made me laugh, and then so it's like, you know what, I'm gonna. Do. So that was like on Friday night. We had a Saturday night. I go, you know what, he didn't, and he didn't do it Saturday because I was actually doing well. So I was like, I'm going to do it to him on Saturday because dummy doesn't get that it's, he was doing because I was bombing. This, yeah. is, this is 20 <laughs> something years ago. So he's going up and he's, and he's doing well. So I go and do the exact same thing to him. Same, just like you, Mike, nothing. <laughs> and he just goes, oh, oh, yeah, good for you. I'm like, mother <laughs> fuck. 
uh, the other great one was speaking of Todd Glass was down at the old Irvine Improv, and it was uh, me, Gary Valentine, and Todd Glass, and we would rotate, you know, who would do what spot, and and so whoever was going last, of course, the audience doesn't know who that is. So like the very first night, Gary Valentine's closing the show. And in the middle of my set, he just comes up behind me and turns the vacuum on and starts vacuuming the stage. <laughs> and he just starts, and I go, sir, not, sir, I'm doing a show here. This is not the time. <laughs> oh, oh, is this the wrong time for this? I go, I go yes, we're doing a show, Gary. I, oh, I, sir, I get, you know, right. and oh, I apologize. So then he does, you know, he, and then Todd would do something to me and then I would do something to Todd. It, it was, it was like, the, I think the last week of the improv at, uh, uh, at the old location. Yeah. yeah. And so Wait. like nobody cared. Right. So the three of us just had fun, and the audience was in on it. They somehow enjoyed it as well, and uh, it was great. Yeah, if We're, the audience gets the uh, impression that you're all you know each other, and then you're having fun, and they're part of the joke, and you know, they yeah. they get it. But man, when they storm off angry, it's not a good thing. And then, Jimmy, it's me. Do 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 do. <laughs> Mike, I, now here's the thing: I would laugh my ass off at that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not so sure I would today. I would today, like, right? Like, because you know, the audience is there, like. Look, this was not a great gig. That's we didn't the want to thing. be there. It's, it's I be mean, the gig. so I was either making light of it or just like he just, yeah, he didn't want to be there anyway. And we could just tell at this club we were an afterthought. It was like he was trying everything because he yeah. didn't oh, yeah. know what he was doing. Oh. And that was also one of those rooms where we've worked in enough clubs where you go out there and you go, this place is going to be closed within six months. Right. Sure. I went back a year later. The place was the hottest room, hottest club in Monterey. And we're like, what did he do differently? The music was no different. He, he did get rid of the sushi bar. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I look at it, and every bartender and waitress all hot girls. Oh yeah, and, and you were still it. doing comedy there. Uh, yeah, I was there, so it must have been. But uh, it, and it was less. They couldn't wait. It was so obvious they couldn't wait for it to be over yeah, because right. it's, the minute it was good night, everybody. They pulled the stage away, <laughs> right? You know, just like music starts and just. Yeah. No, I did. Uh, I did that. I did that a couple times. And one time I had to, it was during a boxing match. And they wanted to turn off the boxing on the big screen. You know, this is how old it was. It was one of those like pull down projector right, right, screens. Right, yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, it's going longer. They thought it'd be so. We're just going to turn off the match, and and you're going to go on. And, no, 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 don't no, do that. Do Please not don't turn do it that. on. I'll stay as late as you want me to. Don't do that. And it was all there's a bunch of Marines or not Marines. No, but, yeah, uh, there's, there's something a, there, right? Some there's military a naval or there's an intelligence base or something where they go to school to like learn translating and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a big military. Yeah, what was there. the movie? It Which is the, why the hot girls sold the place. Mm-hmm. What's it that? starts with a P, a movie. A movie. Platoon? No, good guess, though. Papillon. Uh, getting there. <laughs> Poseidon Adventure. Oh, you just took a left turn. Just Keep it military, buddy. Oh, oh, that's a ship. Poseidon Adventure is a ship. Yeah, but it's not a military ship. You don't know who's on that boat. <laughs> I do. I see yeah. both. I there, saw it. There's I a saw ca- it recently. There's a captain. Yeah, but not a military captain. You don't know. He can marry you. You, you don't know what wars he's fought. Well, he'd be ex-military, but then. You've got to make a good point. Stars and Stripes. It's in San Francisco. <laughs> it's, it's, the Presidio. Yes. There's more than one. There's more than one Presidio? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? There's more than one. There's a Presidio down in Monterey, and there's a Presidio in uh, uh, San Francisco. I'd like to point out, I don't know what Presidio means. <laughs> it's Spanish for... Uh, the president. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Poseidon. Oh, no. no it's, not military. Sure? it's not military. All right. <laughs> but we just did a benefit for the Wounded Warriors as well. Uh, at the golf tournament. Well, we played golf for the wounded. Well, we yeah, we that's a donated good, that's a bunch a good, of money, and then that's a good you know, charity. Of course, you you have to do like all this background now about every charity you do because we got some thing in the mail. Somebody sends, oh, by the way, uh, wounded warrior just got all this heat for like using most of the money for it doesn't go to the veterans base. Oh, really, wounded warrior? Really? Oh, I hate to hear so that. So they said, you know, what's kind allegedly, of- but you know, we don't. How do you know anymore? You don't. Yeah, know. that's true. And plus, you can't trust the internet. No, that's true. Remember the whole thing going about on about uh, Salvation Army? Oh, the, oh the, yeah, the, that was the, all. The owner of Salvation Army makes $5 million a year and blah, 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 and everybody bought into it, and it turned yeah. out to be bullshit. And the Red Cross, too. There's always... But there's like, I mean, my wife was surprised that I got paid to do a benefit. Well, that's always the, it's always the, the question, isn't it? When you're doing a benefit... Uh, some could argue your the time you're donating is your donation. Sure, the, your time you're yeah, doing yeah. is your donation to the event. And others would say, "Well, if Beyonce does it, they're paying her to be there mm-hmm. because then they pay her, and then she attracts all these other people that are and they're going to end up raising more money." But I'm kind of I I I don't know where I stand on that. Like yeah. I kind of feel like I want to make money, then yet I feel like an asshole taking the check. Yeah. I don't know what to do ever. Because a, a guy came up after after the show and said. 
thank you for uh, donating your time. And I was like, oh. Oh, I didn't, though, sir. I, I didn't really donate my time. This. I asked for a wounded warrior to carry my golf bag. Was that a wrong <laughs> thing? <laughs> hey, we um, followed a guy. donating his time. Uh, right, the guy in front of us had uh, was missing his legs. Yes, absolutely. And uh, you, you know, asked had, him to carry your bags. I thought it was inappropriate to him. Yeah, right? I, I don't, thought I don't you know, like Mike. To, first I tipped, of all, I tipped well. That you're was a my guest point. on my show, and I don't like to point the finger. <laughs> I said, Mike. We have, first of all, we have a golf cart. There's yeah. no reason to have a man carry your bag. And Mike said, I'm going to make this guy earn it. <laughs> I'm here support. I'm going to make this guy go 18 holes. Right. Mike let him hit a couple of holes. That was, it was nice. A couple yeah. par threes. Yeah, he used his leg, which hey, seemed unfair. Hey, whoa. Uh, I think it's very fair. <laughs> right? I remember I was asked to do this uh, tournament last year. No. Yeah. No, you were asked to do a different one. Oh, okay. Conan. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's a different one. And then uh, it came around this year, you had another fallout. No, we did not have a fallout. No, really? You just went ahead and asked JP mm-hmm, ahead mm-hmm. of me? Yeah. How did that happen? How did, I, how did JP get ahead of me? Oh, I could, do you want me to send you an email list? <laughs> oh, wow. On responses? Oh, all right. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have five hundred dollars? You wanted to spend, Murray? Is that how much it costs to play? Mm-hmm. Yeah, really? Where are you playing yeah. Pebble Beach? We were playing the. Uh, we were donating to a cause. Yeah. Murray. Our wounded warriors. All right. Really? Oh, that's yeah. not, all right. So, I did offer. I will tell you this. I did offer to host the awards uh, ceremony. Yeah. The the raffle at the, the end. raffle and all that because mm-hmm. I I did feel like well there, I'm here as a quote unquote celebrity playing this golf and sure. it's like what you do every year at Conan tournament right. and do a fine job. Thank you and I and I do and I enjoy doing that. I yeah, think it's, it's fun, fun to do the to the raffle. And, but they had this guy, a professional auction guy doing it mm-hmm. that who, who I thought was great at the same time wasn't getting results. Like it was the same four people bidding on everything. Yeah. And thank God for those four guys. Oh boy, that would have been uncomfortable when things just don't sell. What are they bidding for there? What do you? Call well, what I, I bid? What did I bid on, Mike? I bid on uh, to turn my backyard into a, uh, a putting into, green. Into a putting green. Oh, so I, free landscaping. Free landscaping. Yeah. I bid on that. I went up to. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how much I went up to, but uh, I regret not going the extra hundred dollars to win it. There was a ah. lot of questions in that, though. Were they only going to? It was it. Was it just general landscaping, like for the whole yard, or you have to have a putting green? Can you just? I went to the website. Apparently, you could do. Uh, you know, you know how much water it's going to take to keep that green, though. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Uh, Look at Murray's yard. Art- artificial, all artificial. Thousands of gallons. Oh, oh, yeah, it's okay. all artificial. So all right. you would rip up everything in the backyard and make an artificial uh, backyard out of it. Good Putting for the green. environment, also. It, it, which is why, again, I'm mad I didn't go the extra hundred dollars to win it. Huh? Because I went to seventy five thousand dollars, <laughs> and the guy that beat me went to seventy five thousand uh, one hundred. And if I oh, could have gone to the ATM. Uh, I certainly could have, but I was busy. I was busy uh, enjoying the day yeah, at the golf right. course. I will we, say, JP won a complimentary bottle of uh, Tito's vodka, and some guy stole it off <laughs> our table. Really? Some guy stole it off our table. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, we used to do this thing, and we we're thinking about doing it, but I don't want to organize it. We used to do the comics open, and like forty comics would. Where would you play, Murray? DeBell Golf Course in uh, Sure. Just played there the other Burbank day under yep. the uh, what's that place up top? The Outlook or the Outlaw or something like that. The Overlook? Oh, with that, we go there every year for Father's Day. I love it there. We used to play there. Yeah, we played there a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. It used to be the it, because nobody would play it, so you could basically just call up and go, hey, can I come at 10 o'clock? Yeah, come now. Come whenever you want. And that's, and that's what we did. Some guy called up and said, hey, we have 35 comedians who want to come down on Friday, and they're like, all right, just started laying out tea times, and Chris Hardwick won every year. <laughs> Chris Hardwick did? <laughs> yeah. He's an amazing did... golfer and an amazing uh, bowler. Uh, well, his bowler. dad was a professional I didn't golfer. know that Chris And an amazing golf. chess player. I knew that, I but I didn't know about the golf. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, yeah. give us something, Hardwick. <laughs> no. God, the guy's handsome. He's got forty nine TV shows. Not a fucking guy putts better than me. I introduced him to podcasting. You got to be kidding me. Mm-mm. Well, that can't be true, Murray. It's true. No, Murray. He was a guest on my show long before. He was, of course. No, I'm gonna have to rethink. If that. there's some kind of a technology thing, he knew about it well before. Yeah, of us. Murray. I think that's crazy. I, Are I you hate sure to keep... he was on before. Uh, well, he was on mine? Murray, I, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> no, I don't know that. Okay. But secondly, I don't want to keep knowing, but there's, I agree with Mike. Chris Hardwick is the king of... I maybe not introduced him. Maybe that's a strong word. <laughs> I don't know. Reintroduced him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm guessing he had his own by the time that... No, uh, he didn't have his own when well, he did mine. He, I started in 2008. Hmm. I'm trying to think of... It. No, he was definitely on then before. Because uh, you were, what, you 2006? Yeah. Hardwick yeah. did introduce me to Twitter, actually. I ran into him in the Indianapolis airport, and I was coming back from – I was at the uh, Kentucky Derby, mm-hmm. and I, but I, you can't get a flight into Louisville because of the uh, Derby. It's just, like, impossible. So I flew into Indy and, and drove down. So I came back that Sunday, and he had worked the club 
in Indianapolis. He was just starting to get back on the road. Mm -hmm. And I ran into him in the terminal and I said, uh, yeah, how was the weekend? And he said, uh, it was great. Sold out. All these. I was like, wow, you sold out? That's pretty good. All those shows. It's like, I didn't know you had a big following there. He's like, yeah, a lot of it's through Twitter. And I was like, what's Twitter? <laughs> and he, he pulls out his phone and starts dialing up. It's like, yeah, I got all these followers and they come out to the shows. And I was like, wow. Oh, my mistake. It wasn't Chris Hardwick. It was Graham Elwood. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. no, Graham did it at the show at my house uh, in 2006. No. Sure. No, no, no. Yeah, he was one of the guys who came to my home. He was on my first episode. Mo oh, Murray. That was at my house. Murray. No. Oh. I hate, I really feel like I'm no ending you a lot here. <laughs> but uh, you, when, you, when you throw out such ludicrous facts, <laughs> there's nothing I could do. Yeah, you think so? He was at my, he was at my home. He was definitely on within the first year. Home. Mm, I'm thinking Paul Gilmartin. my wife sleeps. Who? Paul Gilmartin, I think. Nope. So. No, you, what? <laughs> Still no. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, uh -huh, 100%. You never came to my old place over on Hudson. Uh, Paul would have been on let's see, Mike Mike Siegel, uh, Scott Ackerman, Paul of Tompkins, Mike Siegel, Pat Francis. Mike Schmidt? No, Mike, well, Mike was on all of them. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So wait. Wait, you're remembering the order of you, of you starting? No, I'm just remembering who came to my home. Oh, okay. Ackerman, Glass, Thompson, Thompson, Paul of Tompkins, uh, Pat Francis, Mike Siegel, Paul Gilmartin, Graham Elwood. Those are the guys that did it at my home. Oh. So that's between 2006 to 2000. God, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking Greg Proops. Oh, there's a good chance of that. <laughs> there's a good chance of that. <laughs> was it Keenan Ivory Wayans? It was Keenan Ivory I also had the black guy that opened for you down at uh, that benefit. <laughs> had that guy on in 2007. Oh, you know what else he did, which was great? Uh, after every punch, all right, there was a podium, and he was smart enough to take the microphone out of the podium. It was wireless mic. But every time he did a punchline, he'd turn around and drink his, his rum and coke. Oh, to look at his notes. Mm. Oh, yeah, but it was like, it was like, punchline, turn, drink, look at the note, <laughs> turn back around and go, knock, knock. Was this guy like a San Diego? Uh, Orange County guy? Orange County? OC, nice bitch. guy? Uh, nice guy? I did a morning show once, a morning uh, private gig once, where I was not smart enough. It was kind of a combo. I wasn't, I didn't, it didn't occur to me to take the mic out of the mic stand of the, of the podium. Okay. Like, I admit that. It did not. Sure. Yet at the same time, I loved being behind it because it was a barrier between me and that audience. And it was like, I wasn't funny enough yet to have confidence. So it was like having that there kind of gave me like, you know, a little, uh, a little security, preacher little, action. Yeah. A little, yeah. uh, uh, just security, like security blanket. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but in hindsight, it was like, yeah, dummy, you take the mic out of the, Stand and you walk around the stage so that they enjoy you. You're not a lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> I had Asking to follow the worst benefit I had to do was uh, at the funny firm, the old funny firm in Chicago, and they were doing some benefit for the Anti Defamation League. So it's a room full of lawyers mm -hmm. whose job it is to single out offensive speech and uh -huh. sue people for it. <laughs> and so beforehand, it was, I remember it was me, Ali Leroy, and Franklin Ajay. That's oh. who I introduced to podcasting. <laughs> Franklin nope. Ajay. No? Are you sure? No, I was one of the first. But was that your house? Yeah. Before the show started, and I went first, the, before the show started, there was a lecturer, some professor from Northwestern or something going up there and basically boiling humor down. What is funny? What uh, constitutes humor? Boiling it down to its most scientific, unfunny aspect. Mm -hmm. All right. Mike Sager. Now comedy. And it was awful. Awful. I was... Uh... I know normal executive producers don't say this, but I was show running a pilot, and I did not get along with... I, th I actually think you can say that. Oh, I can't say that? <laughs> I think okay. you can. I did not get along with the woman above me at all, and it was turned out to be a horrible, horrible experience, and what really put the nail in the coffin was during tape day, she's like, we're going over this script, because I was an English major, and I said... Uh, nobody kills jokes more than English majors. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> Which is true, because she was going in, taking out commas uh, and, and all that stuff, and that just put the nail in the coffin for me. But I got my, to meet Mike Henry, hired Mike Henry. Mike Henry's show. the greatest. And one of the, best, uh, one of the best writers in the biz. I agree with as that. I, as far as I'm concerned. Really great. Funny guy. One of my first introductions to the network comedy mm -hmm. life was, uh, I was out here visiting once, and somebody said, one of my first trips out to LA, I just started comedy, probably doing it a few years, but I was my first trip to LA mm -hmm. and I had uh, a cousin, like not really, I don't know what this would be. Like my dad and her mother were cousins. You know, she's from New York. I never maybe met this maybe woman. second cousin. Yeah. I don't know not, what that maybe means. Maybe not even, right? Or just a person you met. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I didn't know her. Didn't know her, but they said, someone, oh, you're going out to LA. You, you should have uh, lunch with your, your cousin. She's in the TV business. 
And I was like, all right. <laughs> so uh, I won't say the network, or whatever, but she worked. Uh, she was in, she was a current producer. Mm-hmm. So basically she was the, the suit. She worked for uh, a sitcom. It was a pretty well-known sitcom. But basically, as a current producer, you're the network suit that comes down to the set and tells everybody what they can't say, basically. Right. And so... Oh, wait, she was, was she S&P? What? Stan, was she standards and practices? No, she was, she, was the, she was the network person on set. She was the executive basically. in charge. She wasn't running the show. She wasn't, she wasn't a creative side. Okay, basically. okay. But uh, I had lunch with her, and she said, oh, you're in comedy... I said, yeah, this is, it's, and she worked in the, she was a VP in the comedy department. And she told me, yeah, I don't really, I don't go to comedy shows that much. I don't really like, I just never laugh and oh. <laughs> stuff. And I'm sitting across from her going, you're in a comedy executive mm-hmm. at a network. And then years later, she rose really high in comedy development. Really? Network, yeah. Tina Fey. I don't think she's in it anymore. But uh, what do you say to that, Mike? When she yeah, says I, that, I like, didn't know what to say. Just, I find myself going, "Well, I can say it, like agreeing with it, like because yes. you're so incredible." Well, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, I you're around really it all the time. You're a yeah. comedy, so sure I like it for Christ's sake. <laughs> you deal with it all day, right? <laughs> in the comedy, a comedy, and she was a smart person. Mm-hmm. But that's when you realize, oh, she could be in any business. She could be working in a right. shoe business, mm-hmm. but she just chose this line of work, and now she's giving notes to people. And I went, "Oh my God." That's, now it all makes sense now. You know why so much crap gets on TV. I got in. I got into this business backwards. I had a a, a a sketch show that me and my partners got a pilot deal out of and got a huge agency. And when that fell apart, I had nothing else on my resume. So you know what I mean. But we were pitching, and we we had a sizzle before sizzle. This was like ninety six, so it was even before sizzles. And we had a sizzle reel. And we were showing it. We were at MTV, and we showed it. And they're like, "Yeah, so you can see how kind of we're influenced by Monty Python and the Young Ones." And she's like, "The Young Ones." It's like, "Yeah, this is British." It's like British TV show. She's like, "Oh, I don't really watch TV." You're in it, yeah. executive MTV, <laughs> executive at MTV. My favorite, and I, I, I say, and I say this one on every show because, and so people are going to go, "Oh, here's this story again." Uh, I was, I had a meeting at E. I don't remember the woman's name, but it was at E. Uh, it's got to be a decade ago. And um, I knew that she didn't want to meet me. I knew that she didn't want to meet me. And so I went into it. Admittedly, I went in with a bad attitude, but she was also being very unpleasant because mm-hmm. she did not want to meet with me. Sure. And uh, I believe her quote was, uh, eh, the, the world's seen enough of Jimmy Pardo. I, we get it. Like that. And then <laughs> somebody was like, but you should see him for this. He's perfect for this job. Okay, I'll see him. By the way, there's different. That, I shouldn't know that. Well, right? Yeah, as, yeah. As, 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 yeah. Hey, you're going to go into this interview. Know this. She doesn't really want to see you. Like, why the fuck would you tell me that? <laughs> so I go in, and I could tell she's just tolerating it. And then she says, um, uh, she goes, well, tell me, so who are your influences? Who are your idols? And I said, well, obviously, the top idol is Carson. Sure. And she goes, oh, my God, he's grown so much since MTV, hasn't he? <laughs> and I went, well, Johnny Carson. Hey. Oh, oh yeah, I, that's before my time. I, I went, okay. <laughs> we're, we're done here. And I, I was like, I go, you know, let's wrap it up. And, and then, you know, I left. She goes, boy, boy, you seem to have it. I, I go, listen, I, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why mm-hmm. you want it, you know, why you agree to see me when it's obvious you don't have any interest in hiring me for this. And and then she's like, oh, and then she called my agent. It's like, boy, you came in with a bad yeah, attitude. Oh, yeah, it's like, I wonder why. I wonder why you came in with a bad <laughs> attitude, you dumb coos. Here's my, here's my rule. And we don't have, this is not meeting talk, but here's my rule for meetings. If you're 20 minutes late, I cancel. You walk out. I walk out. I just say, hey, listen, I'm sorry. Uh, you're obvi- he's obviously very busy. I have another meeting. Uh, let's reschedule. Can I call you later to reschedule? Anything after 20 minutes, they're pushed back so far. You're either going to be having a meeting while they're having lunch mm. or you're going to have a meeting while they're taking another call. I've just done it. Too many, that 20 minutes, I'm not going to be like, 20 minutes, fuck this. <laughs> Kick over a table right. and leave. <laughs> right. Right. But I'm like, hey, listen, I have another appointment at three. Uh, he's obviously very busy. Let's just go ahead and reschedule. And they're like, oh, you know what? It's usually like, you know what? That's probably better. He's really backed up to it. It's usually nine right, and a half right. times out of ten. You don't like that it's a guy in this scenario. You don't think women could run this country? Why, you want to call somebody a coos again? I know, right? <laughs> That's two in one show. I don't disagree with that, Murray. <laughs> don't think I didn't hate myself the second time I used it. Don't think I didn't hate myself. <laughs> uh, but dude, dude, something you said, Mike, made me think of, you know, when I was in the record business back in the... Uh, Okay, the eighties. Um, there were the types were you A&R? that was that. Were you A and R? No, I was sales rep for okay. MCA Records. But you know, we were all were in the same office. But there was the people that a couple of sales guys didn't give a shit about music at all. Like it was mm-hmm. just they might as well have been selling vacuums. They just <laughs> wanted to meet their their, their quota. quota. They, they needed to make sales. They wanted to get their sales. They wanted to make their uh, you know get their bonuses and all that. Then there were some that were there because they loved music. Mm-hmm. And I just assume because for me working in record stores and getting that job to work for a label like. 
here we go. I got the dream job. It's going to be a bunch of like-minded people. I get the record store. It's the record store, but working for the label. And it was like, oh, no, they don't. Some people here don't give a shit about this at all. Right. They're, when you they're realize- passionate about sales. Yes. They're not passionate about music. And they're usually like, like I, I left before the record industry crumbled. Mm-hmm. But some of those guys, they literally didn't. It's like, oh, that's over. I'll go over here to Procter & Gamble and sell yeah, yeah. this now. This is what I do. And it's like. I would have been devastated. Oh. Like, what the shit am I going to do now? This is my life. I don't have that sales gene at all. Oh, I didn't no, either. I, I, I was horrible it. at it. Oh, I, I take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. I, I couldn't even sell M and M's for Little League. Oh, like, it was, it was oh, awful. It's like, yeah, oh. I, 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 this is how I, you don't want these, do you? I, mean, I, mean, yeah, I got to sell them for my. Uh, you know, <laughs> you might gain weight. You don't. <laughs> Diabetes, you don't need that. I remember I had I, I, I had a phone, when I first moved to town. I, I got the phone job that for surveys. Yes, to do movie surveys, which on your training the surveys like four questions. And you're like, oh, this is a piece of cake. Then on your first day, it's thirty seven pages, and <laughs> everybody hangs up on you. <laughs> and they're like, you have ninety days to meet your quota. And I was like, all right, I have ninety days to find a new job <laughs> because I, <laughs> knew, this is I not- knew I was out on <laughs> right. that ninetieth day, man. So I put a fire under my ass to get a real job. <laughs> well, you see, how in any of these are big corporations, like studios and networks mm-hmm. and the, the, and agencies. They're all big corporations. So what? How they start? You realize in the hierarchy how they weed out the free thinkers and the creative people is through the assistant process. You usually, got to start out as somebody's assistant. Mm-hmm. Well, most people, like a lot of screenwriters and people like that, and producers. They all went off. They were starting as somebody's assistant and went, fuck this. I can't take this. I'll go write my own shit. Right. Yeah. And so the free thinkers and the independent <laughs> ones leave. So who's the ones that left are the ones that sit there and take the shit. They're good. They don't make waves. Mm-hmm. They don't, you know, because you put your neck out, you know, it'll get chopped off and you'll, if something fails. That's another gene I don't have. Assistant gene. Yeah. Organizing stuff. Look at this. I, have, I cleaned this before you came. Thank you. And it's still disorganized. Yeah. <laughs> I said, that, that, that U2 picture Pat Francis gave me two years ago. I still haven't hung it up on the wall. <laughs> that looks good there. It was nice. Yeah. He, he, did that. he did that for me. For it was sure. nice of him. Before we talk about Park Castathon, yeah? uh, getting back to benefits, did a, uh, a benefit uh, a couple of years ago, and I apologize to my listeners. They probably heard this, but I haven't told it in a while, so you'll enjoy it again. Uh, it was me and a comedian named Mike Pace. Michael oh, Pace, a very, uh, very great comic, originally from the St. Louis area, Mike. Is that possible? I think so. Is he yes. from? I don't know. You know, he lives down in Southern California now. Yeah, now he's down there. Yeah, and but he was funny. He was funny that night. I know that's the only time I ever worked with him. And it was for uh, a, a company called Surgical Benefits, which I'm like, Surgical Benefits, just start writing my own jokes, mm. you know? Oh, boy, a scapula again? You know, whatever, you know, all these jokes. Then it turns out that they do facial reconstruction surgery for either. Inner city kids or poor children, or sadly, people have been beaten, you know, kids who have suffered abuse and, and all that. So I obviously scrapped all those jokes I wrote on the 405. <laughs> Got rid of those first thing. Uh, as a headliner, you know how to do that. Oh, uh, absolutely. You yeah. know how to adjust. Yeah. Um, and so, it, again, it was one of those professional MCs, you know, he ran the auction and then he introduced everybody to the buffet and he called for table four. You're, you know, go up and then he's like, okay, we're running a little behind, but I was opening the show and Mike was closing it. We're running a little behind, so you're going to go on in like a half hour. I'm like, fine, grab something to eat. Half hour turns into an hour, and then Mike Pace and I are in the back just bitching. Just bitch, come on, what are they doing? And they're like, okay, we're coming up to the comedy. Uh, but, Murray, before you go on, uh, we have a special guest speaker from uh, uh, Benefits, from Surgical Benefits. I'm like, all right, sweet, a doctor. These guys are a snooze. They're going to want to laugh after this. It was a 16-year-old girl who had the facial reconstruction surgery oh. came on. And did her speech and closed with, through tears, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have a prom date this year. Just crushed everybody. Just bawling, tearing, and meanwhile in the back going, I got to follow. Right. I can't follow. This is ridiculous. I can't follow this. And then the, guy, then the MC goes, well, uh, Lisa or Cristela Alonso, whatever your name is, uh, as a surprise for you, we brought... The man who performed your surgery, Dr. Rosenstein, Dr. Rosenstein. Oh, it had to be Jewish, huh, Murray? (laughs) Why why does Christelle Alonso get hurt in this story, by the way? (laughs) I I I meant to say Angela Johnson. I don't know why. I don't know why I I wrote that. So me and Mike bitching for the last hour, the guy in the room goes, excuse me. Oh, no. (laughs) It was Dr. Rosenstein comes out, and they just... Bring the house down in tears, and you know, every- show's over. Yeah, 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 done. And like, emits crying 
Uh, you've seen him on Comedy Central, Murray Valteriento. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, and just 20 minutes of death. Just silence. People were getting up and going to get tissues. People were getting up to go and get oh. drinks. The only, th- the only thing I remember is uh, Christopher Knight was in the audience. Chris oh, Knight. Uh, oh, Peter great, Brady. Brady. Peter, great Peter Brady. Great Peter Brady. And I kept looking at him, and my instincts were like, go to Peter Brady. Yes, this is the only way that's and you. I can just see. And it. he's sitting there. Don't don't look at me. Don't, don't bring, talk to me. Don't drag me into your hell, hack. <laughs> don't bring me into just, this. That was it. And so that's why I was really nervous about the uh, the last country club because right. I was in a country club down in San Diego where it was just they were shitting money. I just remember the one country club Orange County story that I had. I had to go down there and did a benefit for the some traveling softball team down there, mm-hmm. which they're from. It was like Laguna Beach or something. It was something really beautiful and it was on this bluff overlooking the sea and just and i found out these they were like high school girls but they're traveling softball team and that they travel all over the country and this is their fundraiser to pay for you know everything and and i go down there and they again they do all this stuff beforehand they have the dinner and then they start dancing like they have a dj and it's like everybody's up and dancing well, once the dancing starts, this this night's over. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, and I kept telling them, no, we have to go on before the DJ kicks in. You know, right. you don't go DJ then comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, once people are up out of their chairs, it's over. It's like we'll talk during dinner. I don't care, but mm-hmm. let's get up there. No, we just we set it up this way, and you guys will go on after. And it was me and Rusty Nails. You yeah, know Rusty Nails. No, yeah, and that's a good so name. I was going given first. birth given. Oh yeah, that's given. Yeah. And somehow I plowed through. And again, it was like that. Okay, now everybody sit down. We're going to start the comedy. It's like, no, they're up. They're already dancing. Over, they're already yeah. drunk. And they're at the bar. They're doing, they're just. Never do comedy after something funner than comedy. Right. <laughs> and right. <they> go up. <laughs> and and I, somehow I plowed through with them. Half the people ignoring me. You couldn't hear all that stuff. Everything. I was like, I'm done. I get out. I get my check. I'm, I'm leaving the building. And as I'm leaving, I hear Rusty from stage going, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I was like, done. And I go run to my car, start it. Boosh, I'm gone. And I was like, oh, I couldn't wait to get It's like, by the time he's off, I hope to be, you know, I'm on the four or five. I'm done. I'm gone. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> as I'm walking out the building, I'm like, thank God I'm gone. I got hired to do a kid uh, to do a graduation once from KJ Riddles. The guy came oh, to yeah, yeah. KJ Riddles. Riddles. KJ Riddles in, or- in the Orland Park, Island. Illinois. And the guy came on a Sunday and saw me and had, had a great set. And then the party was the next weekend. And he's like, I forget what he offered me. It wasn't a lot of money. I mean, this, I mean, to me, it was, but it wasn't, you know. And he also owned the local. Maybe I told this last time. I, again, I don't remember. What I don't. Think it, doesn't, it doesn't ring a bell. He owned the local uh, Nautilus. Remember, Nautilus was a big name oh, in, health in health club. It was Nautilus mm-hmm. Health Club. And I said to him, uh, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm actually, uh, I've been, I'm, I'm on the road. I'm lazy. And I said, but so instead of paying me, why don't you just give me a year membership? Because oh, I can't do that, buddy. <laughs> I'll pay you your money. So because you know, membership was probably. I don't know, fifteen hundred dollars or whatever yeah, for sure. the year. Okay. But in reality, it's nothing. It's air. Yeah. yeah. You're not giving <laughs> yeah. me anything, you dunce. <laughs> so uh, he goes, Oh, I can't do that, buddy. I'll pay you your rate. You know. So he paid me and I show up and I am just effing bombing. You know, it was a family it's a family mm-hmm. graduation. Uh the kids are graduating eighth grade. I thought they were graduating. No, I'm I about oh yeah, I kept on saying, What college are you going to? I'm not. I, I I don't know what, what college. I, I don't know yet. I don't know what college I'm going to. And and so I kept that. And they, and they all looked like yeah. they, I, th- I thought they were graduating. I'm Thirteen, idiot. They're yeah. children. <laughs> They're children. But they looked older than that. And, and yeah. it's like, well, why would you hire a professional comedian who you just saw at a club entertain children? Right. And so I'm bombing. And then the grandmother literally at one point walks. The grandmother walks from the restroom back to her chair, stops in front of me, and goes, "Bah." <laughs> With the, <laughs> the, with the wave of the hand, like, from right to left. Bleh. And then somebody says, why don't we get, I'll make up a name, why don't we get Ricky up there? Ricky, let's get Ricky up there. I go, I go I'm go. i sure Ricky's great, folks, but, you know, let, let me, and I, and I just want to do my time and get out of <laughs> They're there. They're calling out for Ricky? They're calling for Ricky. Oh. Ricky is uh, six, yeah. but does. And but a, hilarious. Let's be, does let's be a, fair. In fairness, does a great George Bush impression. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he's doing, he's basically doing Dana Carvey. Right. Sure, Not sure. going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, he's doing, but he's six. So it's fucking great. Yeah. So he kills and then hands the mic back to me. And I go, oh, so I got to follow the kid now? <laughs> Just get off. You know, it's, like, it's horrible. But it's like, yeah, I got buried by a six-year-old saying three lines from Dana Carvey's act. <laughs> horrible. 
<laughs> and then the guy was like, he goes, I, he goes, well, I guess I, I guess I have to pay you, right? And I go, I said, I, I did my time, man. You give yeah. me my money. He's like, well, I, I go, I, I said, hey, I try to give you an up by giving me a health club membership. Trust me, I was never going to show up for that, <laughs> especially after this. Like, I couldn't show my face to that guy. Oh, I lost money. Man. And it was like, it had to be nothing. $200 at the yeah. moment. Like, it was nothing. I was green in the business. Sure. So it was like, dummy, just overvaluing his own gym membership. It's like, <laughs> they, you're giving me nothing. Well, when the, the people, I don't know, when, when the woman told me about the guy she was hiring, and I apologize if this guy's listening to my podcast. I don't mean to shit on the opener from this <laughs> thing. I'm not. But he was, oh, she saw me at the Bray Improv. It was the best set I had. Like 50 of my friends were there. There were 75 people. And she, I'm like, oh, well, no wonder you had such a great set. 50 uh. of your best friends were there who obviously never heard a knock-knock joke before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or anything like that. But I will say this, this one woman came up after, after the show, and she, she reminded me of Mrs. Carlson from WKRP in oh, Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. She came up, and she like hit me in the arm, and she goes, why do you hold back? Oh. And I go, I hold, and I'm like, you're looking at the only uh, <laughs> political material I have. You know, I'm not Jimmy Dore at all. She's like, those white, rich white Republicans need their dick knocked in the dirt. Oh, wow. And I go, yeah. She goes, I know, because I'm a rich white Republican. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sweet. Too bad I'm married. <laughs> Mrs. Carlson. Mrs. Carlson. <laughs> they all need loving, Mike. They do. Oh, they that's all need true. loving. It's true. There were times. <laughs> all right. Tell us about Parcastathon before we wrap it up. Merry uh, Parcastathon, of course. Is my, uh, coming uh, up here. Some very busy uh, Hollywood players right here. Mm-hmm. I got a gig. You got a meeting. You. I have a thing. You got to wash your hair. <laughs> um, no, not, do not, don't, do not don't touch, touch that hair. Don't touch, touch that I don't know when the last time you had headshots. <laughs> Today's the day? Three o'clock, okay. right after I kill myself. <laughs> oh, boy. It's a busy day for you. I forgot you had that at noon. Uh, Parkcast-a-thon is on March 5th. You can stream it live at nevernotfunny.com. Repeating, nevernotfunny.com. It is the 12-hour mar- uh, 12 marathon version of my podcast, Never Not Funny, uh, to raise money for Smile Train, the organization that goes to third world countries and uh, does the surgery to fix uh, the cleft, cleft, palate. cleft palace, cleft lips of children and or mm-hmm. adults that can otherwise afford it. Uh, each surgery uh, only costs $250. And only takes uh, forty five minutes. I uh, had the opportunity to go down to Mexico this past year and watch uh, Pat Francis and Matt Belknap and I host it. And they invited the three of us down to watch a procedure. And so we got to meet some of the families. And we got to meet the the doctor. It must have been amazing. It was amazing. It was you know I, I know followed it's you cliche, guys on Twitter, but it's uh, it's life changing. It's it's it to see uh, the joy and the love in these parents' faces when they see their child's face being you know changed. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really was. Uh, it was amazing to see just the, you know, the one dad whose eyes teared up when he would show me the before and after, and he he just pointed to the doctor, and you know, we they speak Spanish, I don't, right, and so he just looked at him and he was just kept on saying all him, all him, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh god, yeah, and man. that was on the first first ten minutes, I'm already sobbing, right, right, and uh, then to meet the kids and uh, the Murray went up and did twenty, the Murray went right up after that. <laughs> Thirty, I was headlining. Uh, Damn it! I said it again. The the funniest part, the, the the funniest, the funny thing that happened there is is they took us coming down there as an opportunity uh, with the city of uh, I, was Chappas or is Chappas like the Chappas state? Chappas is the state. It's way so down whatever south. the city was in there, but it was the city. We were meeting the president of Chappas, and they're signing some big crazy thing that the city is about to. Uh, uh, support Smile Train even more than they have been. Mm-hmm. So some big, like just these big people signing and news coverage and all that. And they so they used us coming down from America. So the the president comes into the room and he goes, uh, "Are you the three fancy doctors from Los Angeles?" <laughs> and I go, "No, no, 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 we're comedians, <laughs> 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 comedians and doctors." And like thinking I'm being funny, right, right. so he gives this wonderful speech in Spanish. And 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 at one point he goes, uh, and. Uh, the three and a woman's translating the three, you know, he says basically the three doctors and I go, Oh, mother effer. So, <laughs> and I, so I turned to the woman, I'm supposed to speak after that. And I said, I said, I go, you probably, uh, you probably, I don't want to talk now. I, right. I'm a jackass comic. <laughs> I go, I don't want to make the president look bad. She goes, no, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify it. And so I said, well, first things first, we're actually three comedians <laughs> that host a benefit for smile train. And the president which just class goes, Oh, so you support the, uh, uh, you cure the mind and the heart, and the doctor cures the face. Like he, look at that guy, spun it wonderfully, yeah. and like let us off the hook. And it was like we were like uh, uh, Mr. Fine, Mr. Howard, Mr. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> There's three jackasses, and and we have these three. And and when he, and when he you pointed, a scalpel, we have no. these three. Fa- we have these three guys from uh, three doctors from Los Angeles. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, me and Pat and Matt are like, oh, frauds. Uh, but you could uh, you could donate money right on nevernotfunny.com. There's a donate button on there. Uh, different guests on every, I guess, half hour. Uh, in the past, it's been Conan O'Brien and John Hamm and Sarah Silverman and Pat Oswalt and uh, this year, Fred Willard. Uh, mm. Nope, JP's only uh, for the golf course. Uh, <laughs> and only at the very last second. <laughs> only when we ruled out everybody else do we go to JP. But it's, still, it, it's sold out, though. And it's like, sold out live. live. Yeah, but, awesome. uh, but you listen at nevernotfunny.com. It starts at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, and uh, just about raising money for Smile Train to and change lives. you go lives. till midnight? What are you doing this year? We go noon uh, midnight and uh, noon to midnight. Noon to midnight, okay. Yeah, it usually bleeds over a little bit. but uh, Pacific a- time. Pacific time, noon Pacific to midnight? Pacific is noon to midnight, okay. and then 3P to 3A on the East Coast. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to miss two it this year. I'm going to be on the road, so I'm going to... Oh. But I'll, I'll try and... Well, you, again, you stream it, Murray. I'm gonna, I'll stream it on my phone on the drive back, because I'm probably driving back Absolutely. on the fifth. Absolutely. Palm Springs. Love it. You're out at Fantasy Springs Casino. Yes. The improv there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that gig. It took me. I'll tell you this, Murray. What's up? Uh, it took us one time uh, when I went out there. Danielle and Oliver was very young. It took us five hours to get there. Really? And was on it, a Friday? It was on a Friday. Oh, well, yeah. Never going to Friday. And it took the other two comics six hours to get there. Oh. So we had to start the show late. And uh, we all basically just went up in the clothes. We were in our car. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, and, the guy, and the guy, by the way, uh, uh, had no sense of humor about it. Was the, the mad at manager? us. Oh, he was. Really? He had he was mad that we didn't leave at nine a.m. Like it was, uh, and, and we all were like, we left at noon, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah. It took five hours to get here. It took you seven. It normally, takes two and a half. Right. right. Yeah. We like I gave it double the time, and he was like, he goes, well, you should have been more professional. Like he was mad at us. Wow. I remember uh, Pat Francis talked me into going to see Hall and Oates with him last year at Fantasy Springs Casino. I didn't know Pat Francis drives like a grandmother. Oh, is that true? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Six hours. Six what? Hours. One way? That's how I remember it. Six hours, one way. I'm like, I'm driving home. It can't be you. You got to go out of your way to make it six hours. It seemed like six hours. Wow. That's how I remember it. It was a long time. What are you so shocked? It took you five and a half. Well, it, based on his story. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his hard work to podcast. You know you're right. Are you, are you sure? <laughs> I, it took us five and a half hours. Took the other people six. Took us seven. Took us six. six. You're out of your mind. Are you crazy? Are you nuts with six hours? That's, 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 that's unreal. <laughs> you're right. What the fuck's the matter with me? <laughs> he turned on me. I'm an idiot. Well, thanks for coming. Oh, the there's show. the drill. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, as tradition, we do every year uh, from now till March 5th. Uh, any of my CDs or uh, T-shirts that you guys buy will be donating to Podcastathon. Hey, thank you for that. Uh, do, do it every year. It's part of the tradition. I know, but I say thank you for that. Any way to be a generous uh, recipient of okay, such. Good, good. Mike, you just sit there and look pretty. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, my obviously, my... Uh, my uh, uh, CD through my website. I, 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 you can buy it on iTunes, but the, the money won't come until later. Just that's how they pay. So, if, or you can just go straight donations at, at, at murrayvalerio dot com. Or uh, and, and I put it in from the Road Stories listeners. I don't put it in from myself. So you guys get credit also, and you guys do it every year, and I appreciate that. And as uh, do I. Thank you. And uh, yeah, and so guys, I want to thank you, Mike. You're on all the time. Thanks for thank you. For Always having, a pleasure for coming on here. And I can't even believe we didn't even get to talk to you about your. Three cruise ships. Oh, the cruise ship experience. Yeah, next time. We'll Guy's never done one cruise ship in his life. He's done three in four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Loves the seas. Uh, <laughs> they, yeah. The sea was angry my, that day, my friend. <laughs> my body's at home, but my heart's in the wind. Oh, Shiver me timbers. I met my wife Tom there. Waits. I met uh, Brandy. Oh, oh she's, she's a, a fine, fine girl. girl. Oh, you guys know her? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Make a good wife. Something. Yeah. But I had to tell her, the love of my life, my lady, it's the sea. The sea. Well, don't pay the ferryman. <laughs> at least you get to the other side. <laughs> oh, is that what you do it? Mm-hmm. I thought tell you, you didn't pay the ferryman no, at don't all. Don't do it before. No, no, you pay him when you get to the other side. He'll rip oh, you no off that day. he's pissed. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. All right. Good to know. You guys, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. You want to know about life on the road? It's booze, tacos, angry dwarfs, strippers waving guns, and fees, fights, cancel flights, running with the runs, and blacklists, bounce checks, great a bachelorette. <laughs> Drunks in the front making out for your set And middle acts doing blow more missing merch And drive the rental car past another mega church And juice keys, vagina fists, your cell phone is gone One big law and order marathon